Hello, uh, my name is Robert Coots, and I'm the editor, uh, chief editor of the journal Prairie History. And we're marking the release of our third issue of the journal by interviewing some of the authors from the new issue about their articles. Today, or tonight, I'm joined by uh, Derek Null, who uh, wrote an article uh, entitled A Misleading Portrait, A Provisional Government of Assiniboia and the Creation of Manitoba. Um, so welcome, Derek, from Japan. Um, as you wrote uh, in your article, uh, the portrait of Riel and a group of men is one of the most iconic images uh, uh, a photo taken in June of uh, 1870, one of the most iconic in, uh, images in Manitoba history. Um, thought to be a photo of Riel and his counselors, it is in fact a photo, it is not in fact a photo of the provisional government. Uh, as I mentioned before, I, may, I recall being told this years ago by Philip Mayo, uh, formerly of the St. Boniface Museum, that the photo was not of the provisional government, um, though it has been labeled that uh, way many times and for years. Uh, even as late, as you point out in your article, even as late as November 2019, the Canadian government issued a postage stamp with the photo um, Louis Riel and his provisional government councillors. So, hmm. um, Derek, can you uh, tell us, uh, uh, well, I guess the truth about the photo, uh, its background, the photographer, which I know you get into in the mm -hmm. article, uh, the men mm -hmm. in the photo, the, uh, and, and how it came to be mislabeled as the provisional government. Yeah. Um Myself too, for the longest time, the first time that I saw that photograph, um, you know, I was under the impression that it was the entire provisional government that, uh, and the councillors, and that these were, I guess, more or less the fathers of Manitoba, as some have put it. But, um, you know, the, the more uh, I, I, I've seen that photo and I've become intrigued by it and just trying to find out about um, who the actual members of the provisional government were. And, uh, and then I noticed that there were lots of, um, you know, different names associated with the photograph. Some uh, books uh, who use the photo uh, use names like Bonnet, Bonnet Tromage is one of the people. I looked up this person, I found uh, nothing about him anywhere except being mentioned that he was in the photo. Other people say that this individual um, who is uh, Bonnet Tremage is Francois Guillemet. That seems to be who it was who participated in the execution of um, Thomas Scott. Um, but I also, because I have um, an ancestor, uh, Andre No, who was in the provisional government, who was a captain of Louis Riel's and a cousin to Louis Riel, uh, he's not in the photo. So I thought, well, why do they say that this is the provisional government when my, my ancestor is not in the photo? And so a lot of people said, well, he's not in, wasn't in the provisional government, but I looked it up and I've studied this. And of course he was. So this made me question ab about the other people or if there were other people missing in the provisional government. And yes, of course, there were a lot of other people. I think there were 24 uh, missing people or 24 people on the legislative assembly of Assiniboia alone. And in the photograph, there's, I guess, uh, 14 people, Louis Riel, and 13 other people. So this uh, raised questions. And then just the, when the stamp came out, um, Canada Post, it was kind of uh, celebrated, uh, you know, as, um, you know, that this was the time when uh, Louis Riel and the Persian government negotiated uh, Manitoba's entry into Confederation. And, uh, you know, and I thought, well, what about the period after <laughs> you know, um, Confederation, uh, it, was, it was left out that, you know, after the um, government under John A. Macdonald sent in the Red River Expeditionary Force uh, and uh, they, the, the period that followed was called the Reign of Terror, uh, where lots of Métis citizens of uh, Red River and Manitoba were, uh, you know, attacked by the REF. And that's left, and we're celebrating with the stamp and looking at what happened after. I thought that's not conveyed by the photo uh, or the stamp. And uh, so I, I, 
you know, the, in who was the pho photographer? Uh, it, it turns out it's Joseph Langvin, who's, um, you know, I mentioned as the photographer, but some people had suggested it was Ryder Larson, another photographer. Um, so I just wanted to try to clarify who was in the photo, who took the photo, uh, what does it mean? And um, yeah, so that uh, got me interested in, in it and then an article came, came out of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, uh, you, you were speaking about the reign of terror. I don't think a lot of Manitobans mm -hmm. are much aware of that uh, episode um in Manitoba's history and you talked a little bit about uh about it and I think in your article you get into a little more detail about mm -hmm. the sorts of things that actually did happen during that period but uh I have to say that um when you know when I was first starting out as a historian with Parks and that wasn't my area exactly but um mm -hmm. I had never heard of the Reign of Terror, I have to say. And right. it was a colleague of mine, Dan Paymont, who mentioned that. And I I remember thinking at the time, so this would have been in the probably early 80s, that, that this was a term that almost that she had made up or something. That, anyway, mm -hmm. I didn't really think that it had existed. But the more I uh, read about it over the years and, and, and comments you've made in your article, mm -hmm. I realized that it was actually a fairly significant uh, thing uh, after the Wolsey expedition yes. arrived. You know. Yeah, I, and and it's it's been glossed over. Uh, and in, in again in high school when we learned that aspect of history, it wasn't mentioned. Uh, uh, I, you know, I remember the the main books on Manitoba history that, um, that, that were that existed in by the seventies or eighties didn't. To mention it as far as I recall. Um, I only, I guess I, I found out about it. Uh, now it's known. It's in Jean Tellier's uh, book, uh, Northwest is Our Mother. She mentions it. But I only really found out again because of my ancestor, Andre No. And uh, I'm looking uh, at his biography, or his bio, his biography. Uh, you know, I learned that he was bayoneted and almost, and he survived near Pamina by Canadian soldiers. I thought, what, what does that mean? He was bayoneted by Canadian soldiers. How would that be? I thought, you know, but at, at that time that that happened, 1871, that is when Red River joined Manitoba. Why should he be being bayoneted by Canadian soldiers when they joined Canada? I don't understand. <laughs> so mm -hmm. then I looked it up and then what had happened was he had been on a, uh, in the United States helping uh, Lou Riel's mother visit him and Lou Riel was ill around the time. And he was at a hotel, and he was overheard. Or was overheard. Someone called him uh, um, Capitan, and then there were some soldiers there, and they they re recognized him, and then they chased after him and bayoneted him. And then, so I thought, well, why did that happen? And then, and then I found out, well, he wasn't the only one. Uh, and then I learned of Elzier Goulet, who was killed by uh, some uh, faction of the RREF. Um, all kinds of violence imposed on people, and then uh, you know, hundreds of Métis went out west and to Montana, to Saskatchewan, and um, you know, I never learned that in school. <laughs> and um, you know, and, and a lot of the people that left there had to deal with it again in 1885. So I had another ancestor, Damas Carrier, who's my great great grandfather also. And he participated actually in the first Red River resistance too. He was one of the people with Riel that stood, uh, when Riel stood on the survey chain, surveyors chain, and said, you go no further. Um, that was uh, on or near Andre Noe's land, but um, also Damas Carrier and his father, Eli Carrier, were there, my ancestors, and they, well, Damas Carrier went to Saskatchewan, and then he participated in the uh, Northwest uh, Rebellion and was killed at Batoche. And so, uh, you know, so that's the second ancestor <laughs> that was attacked. So it gives me a different perspective, you know, um, when I see that stamp, I think, well, what about all the things that happened after that? Why are, you know, I'm kind of, uh, you know, skeptical. Uh, should we be celebrating 
uh, you know, the, the transfer at that time, and, and we have to look at it more closely. And the photograph, I think, obscures. It's been used to kind of, um, uh, you know, to, to gloss over. Uh, and, and people don't look any further because they think, oh, that's interesting. These are all they negotiated. Closed and Metis and everyone had their, um, you know, in need dressed and were happy to join Canada. Um, but it wasn't, uh, you know, as I found, it wasn't like that. Uh, it was different from the the official portrayal. I think the official portrayal would have us um, adhere to that view. But um, <clears throat> when you look further, and again, it's only because I think I have that viewpoint because of my ancestors being attacked and killed. <laughs> that uh, gives me a different perspective than um, maybe some people it made me look, explore this issue further and to try to assess the significance of that photograph in a, in a different way. Yeah, and then, then of course, uh, as you mentioned before, so many Métis left Red River after 1870. Uh, right. Saskatchewan uh, because of uh, script issues and uh, uh, land issues and that, all that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, it was a major upheaval in the settlement. It wasn't just, as you say, the Métis having their needs met in joining Canada. Uh, I think that uh, Canada did not have room for many of them uh, or most of them anyway. So yeah, very, that's, very, that's very interesting. And you certainly have a... Um, a pedigree, if I can call it that, right? To, uh, <laughs> to uh, uh, these uh, historical figures, both in 1870 uh, and, and then in 1885. So that's uh, well. That's not the only. Those are not the only two as well. I've I, uh, also um, the wife of um, the mass carrier was the niece of Gabriel Dumont. So Gabriel Dumont is my great 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 uncle really? <laughs> as well oh. so uh yes so i'm connected to all all of the uh you know the, the major um uh, metis um historical figures and that uh you know at, at both uh resistances so um yeah so um maybe if i hadn't been i might have uh you know overlooked some of these issues um, you know would have been easy to overlook but i was just struck by uh, what happened to my ancestors and how it, uh, you can find the details that are there, but they're kind of scattered in different mm -hmm. sources. And you, you, when they're scattered in different sources like that, you don't really connect the dots. Um, but when you kind of look at all of those sources and, you know, with the certain uh, questions, then, uh, you know, something emerges that's different from the common portrayal in, in, in the official versions of Canadian history. I mean, I never learned about any of <laughs> those things in high school or university or just um, from documentaries on the CBC uh, or anything like that. So, um, yeah, so, uh, um, but that's what got me interested in, you know, in the whole history too. Um, it's not my specialty, Red River history, but it's sort of, a, um, you know, a hobby of mine because of my family history. Um, but, um, you know, those, that's what strikes me the most. And uh, just, uh, you know, again, with the, with the photo, uh, it just gives that impression of just a kind of a peaceful negotiation um, to uh, Manitoba's entry into Confederation. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it it's, wasn't quite like that. And, um, there were not always everyone too at Red River was not necessarily supporting Real too. There was more. There was more behind the scenes behind that photo. I think that is interesting, and we should look at um, as well. Besides the part that happened after, you know, eighteen eighteen uh, seventy, the July eighteen seventy um, uh, transfer to um, Confederation. But uh, but the photo always, yeah, it's just uh, kind of portrayed in that, you know, kind of celebratory way um, and uh, case closed. This is, they were all happy. They posed for this, but actually what I also learned about the photo was that it was kind of a, just by chance it, 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 it uh, was taken. So it wasn't something that was um, staged or arranged. Just uh, Langvin happened to be in at Red Saloon 
And uh, that day, uh, Riel was there with a few people from the provisional government and uh, what were considered to be defenders of uh, the people's rights, the Métis rights mainly. And um, so he said, hey, do you want to get your photograph taken? Sure. So they assembled and uh, he took a photograph and it's become, you know, so iconic and uh, compared to often the, uh, you know, the Fathers of Confederation images for Canada. And, um, and, and we just take it at face, face value. But, um, you know, we can't, we can't do that. We have to <laughs> really know who took the photo, who, who that was, who was, in fact, in the photograph. And, um, you know, um, why was it taken? Uh, how has it been portrayed, interpreted? And, uh, and misunderstood by all kinds of people, by uh, Canadians plus, you know, Métis people who okayed the, the stamp with, you know, and, and um, we just don't question, we don't question what this <laughs> image means. Uh, and there, and there, there are things in there that we should, uh, you know, say or, or, you know, admire, like uh, Louis Riel, uh, how he was able to put together, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, such a government and how, you know, the French and English uh, Métis and others were able to, you know, cooperate and uh, which was a surprise to, I think, uh, you know, the Canadian government. That's admirable, but um, there's more, there's more to it um, than what we are usually uh, taught for sure. Well, yeah, it's, it's a, uh... It's a really, really interesting photo with a great, as they say, journalists would say, a backstory uh, to right. it. Um, and like so many other sort of iconic photos in Canadian history, that uh, there's a deeper story to these photos than we often realize. And uh, mm -hmm. so, so thank you very much, Derek, for um, talking mm -hmm. about that. Uh, that was. Uh, uh, really, really interesting, and um, your article is tremendously interesting. And what you told us today about um, all your ancestors, we're looking forward to an article about them as well. Oh, <laughs> sure, I'm definitely uh, interested in doing some more. I have, uh, have a few other ideas <laughs> that I'd like to explore, maybe, and uh, hopefully we'll get another opportunity to to submit something, but I was very happy to be included in this issue because I've, you know, I've read the, the journal in its other format, uh, Manitoba History, for the longest time. And uh, since the 80s, I remember looking at copies of that. And uh, I mentioned before we started the interview, working at Ross House Museum as a tour guide. And um, so I've always been his interested in the history of, um, in, and that's where I was born and raised in Manitoba. So, um, you know, I'm, I still want to maintain that connection, though I'm here now in Tokyo, so far away. I, I think I, I haven't met anybody interested in Métis history or knows who knows what it is really out here. But, um, you know, I've I've talked to a few people about it and who were interested in it and and said, uh, yeah, well, thanks for letting me know about this. I didn't know about the Métis. I didn't know about uh, you know this history, and uh, so maybe I converted a, a couple people to uh, connect to the, this, the history of Manitoba and the Métis history <laughs> out here in Japan. Well, maybe yeah. there'll be subscribers to uh, Furry History. Who knows? Um, well, again... Yeah, who I, knows? Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Um, and I hope uh, you do contribute uh, some articles in the future. Uh, I would love to uh, see that. So thank you. And uh, thank you Great. for joining us all the way from uh, Tokyo. And um, yes, th thanks for that, Derek, and have a good evening.